Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to what is going to be the most valuable video I have ever created. In this video, I am going to be giving you the most actionable information and training that I possibly can with the goal of teaching you how to replicate my exact success using the exact same blueprint and formula to do so, all while avoiding all the mistakes that I've made so you can do it even faster. I am making this video with the sole intention to transform your life and put you on a path for success. And I promise if you watch this entire video and you act on each of the steps, your life will change forever. Over the last few years, I have been on quite a journey. I was stuck in a construction job and I was hungry for a way out and that's when i found high ticket sales over the next year i went on to land a role hit my first 10k month then go on to get to where i'm currently at which is forty thousand dollars a month i'm not going to go too deep into my story but the reason i'm explaining this to you is because in this video i'm going to be giving you the most in-depth actionable guide and the most valuable collection of information that i can that pertains to you getting started not only with high ticket sales but also then going on to the steps after that to build a full life of financial freedom by adding in other high income skills and building an empire. I'm gonna be sharing with you the exact blueprint that allows me to make money like this and allows my friends and students to make money like this. This video isn't going to just be about high ticket sales, but it is going to be about how to completely transform your life by stacking multiple high income skills so that you can literally create your dream life. I want you to make sure that you like and save this video so that you can refer back to it because this is going to be the video that completely changes your life forever. If you don't already know me, my name is Marcel Stam, and I only got into the online space about two years ago. However, I have learned a lot very quickly. I was able to scale myself to $10,000 a week in insanely fast. And I was actually a very useless individual around two years ago. I had no direction, no intention. I had no money to my name. All I did was party and train MMA. And then I found purpose in developing skill sets and helping others. I had some really good guidance from some really intelligent individuals. And I'm going to be sharing all the most important insights and lessons that I've learned on my journey with you right now. Now, I don't want any distracted TikTok virgins here. That is not who I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to the population of individuals like myself who knew they were meant for more, but they didn't know what path to take or how to get there. That path and that vision is exactly what I'm going to be providing you with today. So grab your seatbelts, strap the fuck in, put your phone in another room because shit is about to get well and truly very real. Module one, laying the foundation. You might hear the word foundation and want to skip to the part where the magical source is. But the truth is 99% of people fail, quit, or never even get close to where they should be for the one simple fact that they never instill the right foundations, mental models, beliefs, habits, traits, goals, and much, much more. There's so much more to becoming free and successful than you understand. This isn't simply about finding a business model, a skill, or a product, and then trying to run it up as quickly as possible. There is so many prerequisites that you actually need in place before you even start to think about becoming successful. Because the truth is, your ability to become successful, to make money, and to become the best version of yourself will always tie back to who you are as an individual. Now, you do not need to be one specific type of person to become successful. There is Huberman types that win massively, there is misfit motherfuckers that win massively, and there is geek types that win massively. These are completely different people with completely different traits, yet they all find success. But the things that make them become wildly successful, they normally have in common to some extent. And that's what I'm about to cover. The first thing I want to cover is obsession. Let's talk about it. Why do I always preach and talk about obsession being one of the most important things that you need? Because obsession trumps all else. Mike Tyson, Elon Musk, John Jones, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Solomon, Genghis Khan, they were all obsessed with their mission and their vision. They didn't have a plan B. Mike Tyson wasn't thinking, maybe if this boxing thing doesn't work out, I can just go to university. Does this mean that you need to be obsessed right now? No, and I know this for a fact because I was completely directionless up until just one year ago. But once I had a mission and I had a clear vision, then I became obsessed. And you can become obsessed 
also right now even if you don't feel like it but you don't just need to become obsessed for the sake of it obsession creates a spiral a spiral for all other energy and effort that you transmute into your life for example let's say you have two people and they both have the goal of making one million dollars person a has a plan he wants to make a million dollars and that's his goal then you have another person person b with the same goal but he doesn't just want a million dollars he needs a million dollars and he is obsessed with getting a million dollars person a wakes up has breakfast goes to gym goes to the beach comes home watches some youtube works a bit searches up how to make a million dollars watches a bit more youtube then goes damn i'm getting a little bit distracted i need more discipline so then he goes to youtube and searches how to be more disciplined how to focus spends about a week trying to optimize for motivation and discipline and starts taking cold showers in the morning might even try monk mode so he can really build that discipline person b doesn't have any discipline he doesn't have any motivation because he doesn't need it why he doesn't need to force himself to be motivated he doesn't need to force himself to be disciplined he doesn't need to force himself to focus because he doesn't want to achieve his goals he needs to he's being controlled by an external source he's being controlled by obsession there is no option it is succeed or die trying he wakes up works and then takes a two minute break to eat and feels an overwhelming sense of being left behind because he knows while he was making a coffee someone else was working now this might sound unhealthy to some of you and it may be but the thing is this obsessed is going to absolutely decimate any of his competition so for the ones of you who are truly about it and you don't want this but you need it congratulations because you can harness that and become successful now you might be thinking well i'm not obsessed i don't really care that much you will not go as far however just because you're like that now doesn't mean you have to stay that way forever like i said i wasn't always this way if you're not currently obsessed there could be a few things causing that one lack of vision two lack of why three lack of spirit and four lack of urgency the first one lack of vision what do i mean what i mean is you don't actually have a clear vision of where you are going now how can you expect someone to be obsessed with something or be obsessed with their mission if they don't even know where they're going you can't be it's like trying to fly an airplane without a destination you just keep going in circles you keep flying until you crash <laughs> And this is the reason that I wasn't obsessed. It's because I was floating through life like a leaf in the wind. I didn't know where I was going or why. But let me tell you, once I created a vision and I knew where I was going, I was able to become instantly massively obsessed. Now, I have personally seen a lot of people get started, start to see massive success very early, and then start coasting. And I always thought, how can someone come in, get started, see a lot of success and growth quickly, and then start to coast? and not put your foot down and instantly go all in. They not only lack vision, but they lack a why. They lack spirit and they lack urgency. See, all these things are needed. You can have an extremely clear vision and goal, but if your why is, I want a Ferrari, that's not a big enough why to make you get up every day and hustle and go hard. This is going to lead you to not achieve your vision because what the fuck is a Ferrari? It's a car, who cares? You need to not only have non-material whys, but you need to have whys that are bigger than yourself. The worldly things that you're in pursuit of are never gonna be a big enough why for you to get up and hustle and go hard every single day. You need to be driven by something bigger than yourself, whether it be God, whether it be changing the world, whatever it may be, if it is always individual materialistic things, that is not going to get you to where you need to be. Now, spirit and urgency, these things are slightly different. I look at some people and can tell that they lack spirit. They lack instinct, you know, killer instinct. They lack hunger and ferocity. They just don't inherently want it that bad. And you can see it in fighting. You know, some fighters, they have that killer instinct. Some don't. Some fighters will hurt someone, they get that taste for blood and they will finish. And then other fighters, is, they just seem to lack that killer instinct. It is the same in life. Some people receive opportunities, they get chances, but they just don't seem to capitalize. They just can't put their foot down when they need to. But spirit isn't just about attacking, it's also about resilience. There's some fighters that just, they got that dog in them. And then there's other fighters who, you know, are kind of quitters. And that is the exact same with business and success. There is people who will get knocked to zero and hit rock bottom time and time again and they will get back up and they will keep going and they will be where they want to be again then there is other people who quit at the very first sight of hardship the ability to be resilient is 
paramount. If you don't have that dog in you and you can't bounce back, then you will fold very, very quickly. If when your chips are down and you're truly at rock bottom and you don't have the spirit to dust yourself off and, and keep going and build yourself back up from zero, then you will fail when you go through hardship. Urgency is simple. If you feel like there might be a better time that you can do X, you will never do X. People who win are the people who already feel like they are extremely behind. You could die tomorrow, like the rapture is literally coming. <laughs> Revelations is happening as we speak. And you think you have time to f you're cooked. So this is how you need to begin moving. Number one, vision. You need to become aggressively crystal clear on exactly what it is that you want. And I mean crystal clear, the clearest that you have ever been. What does your wife look like? What shoes do you have on? What does your house look like? What country do you live in? What is your exact income yearly, monthly, daily? How do you make that money? Why do you make that money? How big of a family do you have? How many kids do you have? How much money do you have? Where do you keep your money? Then write what your mission is. Is it to have the biggest empire ever? Is it to own a country? Is it to change life? What is your mission? Once again, become crystal clear on exactly what you want and why you want it. Number two is why do you want those things? Is it to change the world? Is it to impact? Is it to influence? Is it to honor your bloodline? Is it to serve God? Is it self-actualization? Why? Are you actually going to dedicate your life to this mission? Three is spirit. This is where you do some deep intellectual work. Sit in your room with no phone, no distractions for a whole day, I don't care. Order your beliefs, mental models, and decide who you are and what you are actually going to achieve and why. Four is urgency. Is this something that you want or is it something that you need? When do you need it? Are you happy where you are? Are you complacent or are you moving with urgency? Are you already behind? Now, you should realistically spend a few days just on this step. Have an existential crisis if you need to and be willing to completely shed away every ounce of your identity that currently makes you who you are. The next thing that you need to understand is that you have to be willing to shed away your identity. What makes you you? If you're not currently exactly who you want to be and where you want to be, then you need to be willing to shed away your complete identity that makes you you. To take you guys back two years ago, I was living in Melbourne. I was a DJ. I pretty much partied and went out every single weekend. I ended up in a terrible construction job. It was very demeaning work and I hated my life. I was working this job. I lived in a tiny apartment and I thought this was fun at the time. But what I've realized is that a man with no purpose distracts himself with pleasure. You might be coasting through life right now because that might be your identity. What makes you, you? I had to completely shed away that identity. I stopped DJing, I stopped drinking, I stopped clubbing, I stopped all of it. I completely changed my whole identity. People that knew me two years ago, if they looked at my Instagram now, they would not recognize me. A lot of people falsely identify the reason they aren't where they wanna be as a lack of motivation or discipline. But what it truly is, is you having the wrong identity. If you have the identity of a broke person, you will be broke. If you have the identity of someone who goes out clubbing every weekend, you will go out clubbing every weekend. If you've got the identity of an athlete, you will train hard and you will be an athlete. If you've got the identity of a millionaire, you will become a millionaire. If you've got the identity of someone who's addicted, you will be an addict. If you've got the identity of a winner, you will be a winner. And if you have the identity of a loser, you will be a loser. As a man thinketh, so is he. Your thoughts will become your reality. Meaning if you're constantly thinking about going out and having fun and chasing pleasure, that will be your reality. It wasn't until I completely changed my whole life and my way of thinking and what I thought about that my life itself changed. This is because in order to become a version of yourself, reach a level that you've never reached before and you have to change internally as a person into a person that you've never been before, then your life will change in a way that it's never looked before. So be willing to shed away everything that makes you who you are right now and adapt a new identity around who you want to be now. You are about to go through a transformative experience. It won't be easy, it will suck at times, but understand these things and you will have laid the foundations to achieve whatever life that you desire. Module two, the method. Now it's game plan time. Once you've got a vision and a mission and the foundations are laid, it's time to act on a game plan. Now, obviously everyone's different and wants different things, but I'm gonna give you the exact playbook that I use because it is the only thing I know and it is the best one in my humble opinion. And if you know anything about me, then you know it is through my favorite thing, which is called sales, baby. Let's get into it. But before I give you the insanely valuable source on exactly how to transform your life forever, it is important that you understand exactly what we're doing. 
We're going to start with high ticket sales or high ticket closing, which is essentially just a sales role. But a few things make it different from just being a car salesperson or a cold caller. And that's the fact that you're selling expensive offers and expensive digital offers remotely. There are simply people with lots of experience and knowledge and information in the form of a digital offer. People like Eamon Gadzi, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez all sell high ticket offers online. Because you need to speak to a sales rep as a potential customer before you buy the product or service this is where closers come in and this is exactly what you are going to be so if you don't want to learn sales and make a ton of money and learn how to communicate and persuade so well that you can get people to hand you tens of thousands of dollars every single day then this isn't for you but if you do then you have found your path for freedom and i'm going to teach you exactly how to do it. Module three, education. This is the step where you dive deep into self-education. Now, school trains you to hate education, or at least it did for me. It taught me to hate the idea of learning. And something that you will all realize once you leave school is that self-education will actually never betray you. And that when you're actually learning things that serve you and better your life, and things that you enjoy learning, education actually becomes a lot more valuable, enjoyable, and it will actually be the thing that completely changes your life. The very first step, and exactly what I did, is finding the right education. And I like to approach this step from a very objective standpoint. You can absolutely try to do this on your own, and a lot of people do, and you can actually be successful with that. However, I made the educated decision as an individual to instead of taking the long-winded process of learning through my own trial and error and my own mistakes and working my way up through a bunch of different sales roles and sending a million cold random DMs to a bunch of different business owners that have no idea who you are, trying to land a appointment setting role with no experience, to instead use the little money that I did have from my construction job to connect with the person who had the most experience in the space. This is what made me successful. Finding the right person to learn from, building a relationship with them, and then walking the path that they have walked. If you want the opportunity to learn from the person who taught me everything I know, there will be a link to booking a call below. Now, so many people are tentative to invest in their future, or they're too skeptical to take risks such as this. However, when your life depends on something and you want to completely change your life as quickly as possible, it becomes a no-brainer to find the people who have walked the path that you've walked before and to learn from them. Another thing I hear is I do not have the money. Neither did I. But there is these things that are called jobs. You can work them to make money. Then once you make money, you can spend it on your education. Education that you actually need, not university. And then you can use that education to leave your job. And this is exactly what I did. I stacked a little bit of cash, used the last money that I had, getting the right connections, mentors, and training. I will link the academy that I joined below. But if you want to try to do this completely by yourself and be my guest, just be aware of a few things that will occur. One, your chances of quitting instantly multiply due to the fact that when you lack direction, you face hardship or you lack knowledge, you do not have anywhere to turn. And two, the time that it will take you will also multiply as you will be learning through your own trial and error, your own lessons, rather than just learning from someone who's already walked the path and is more experienced than you. But if you truly think that doing this on your own is the best move for you personally, please go ahead and do so. Module four, the sales blueprint. Okay, so now that that's out the way, allow me to teach you Sales. Sales is just a series of asking questions. Your line of questions is going to be used as a tool to help your prospect make the best possible decision for themselves. The correct questions take all the focus off you and place it all on the prospect. Prospects want solutions. They do not want to hear your life story. The less talking you do, the better of a close you have. Now, with your questioning, you want the prospect to come to the conclusion that they need your solution on their own. But how do you do that? You do it by guiding them with the right questions. This leads prospects to basically closing themselves and in certain cases, even selling themselves to you on why they would be a good fit. Questions like, what was it like before? Where are you at right now? Where do you plan to be? And how do you plan to get there? And the question flow should look something like this. What outcome are they looking for? How have they tried to overcome the issue in the past? What's the time frame of their solution? What are the consequences for failing to take action? What would it look like if you did not take action. Extreme
abstraction of emotion gives you fuel for the close. As you ask these questions, you will discover information about the prospect. You should be asking them in a genuinely curious tone as you actually want to learn about this person on a real level so that you can genuinely help them in the best way possible. You want to dive into the prospect's past, present, and future. Past is what they have tried and where they've been. Present is where they currently are on their journey and what they are currently doing. And the future is where they would want to be, why and when. And once again, how you acquire this information is not just by asking the right questions, asking the right question, which looks like this, asking the right question, paying attention to their answers, prompting follow-up questions. And this can be broken down into a circle or a square I don't know, like this. Ask a specific question, get a specific answer, ask an open-ended question about their specific response, and then ask other questions, summarize, restate, and move on. By asking these questions, you will eventually get to a point where the prospect, not you, but the prospect, has a desire to change, and they have let you know that they have that desire to change. The change must come from within the prospect. This is where you start to invoke emotion and draw out emotion of the prospect. People normally have emotion tied to their situation, their current situation and their desired end situation. And the better you are at drawing out that emotion, the more likely you are to close. This is because without emotion tied into the decision, it is far easier for that prospect to feel a lack of urgency and need. To create urgency, you create a timeline by asking questions like, where do you see yourself in six months? two years if you do take action. Then you build an idea of their future in their head. Then what if you don't take action? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna realize that they need to take action else their life will be miserable. This is why it's so important to correctly identify your prospects circumstances and not by assuming you never assume in sales. Never just assume, oh, you must hate your life and that's why you want to learn this. But by asking questions that identify circumstances. Once again, like, what have you tried in the past? How long did you try that? Do you enjoy what you're currently doing? By asking these types of questions, there is really four main things that you are trying to extract. Motive, which is what they want to achieve. Why, which is why they want to achieve it. Problem, which is what's stopping them from achieving it. And pain, what pain is caused by the problem or what pain is caused caused by them not being able to achieve their goal. You need clear, concise information on each of these points in order to have a super strong close. And by no means do you go into the pitch without these things. Because as you go through the pitch, you need to tie each deliverable into their motive, why, problem, and pain. For example, let's say the following. Say their motive is $10,000 a month within the next six months. Why to support themselves and their family and get them out of a financial struggle. Problem is lack of knowledge and guidance and their pain is their family is struggling financially and they can't actually build some wealth. So as you list the deliverables, you can explain, we offer X so that you have the guidance and knowledge that you need, which will get you to $10,000 a month within the next six months so that you can get into a position where you can look after your family and provide for them like you've been trying to do for quite some time. The reason we do this is because the person doesn't really care about the specifics of what you offer, but the person cares about how it affects and changes and improves their situation. The last thing that you ever want to do is be listing deliverables. If you ever find yourself listing deliverables, you've probably fumbled the close. Instead of listing, try engaging your prospect in a conversation. For example, let's say you're selling a business coaching offer and they offer weekly coaching calls. Ask your prospect, Nick, if there was a way that you could get a more hands-on support that you said you needed earlier, for example, having a Facebook ad expert review your ad sets on a weekly Zoom call so you can feel more confident that you're progressing on the right track, would you feel like that would be something that you're looking for? By framing it as a question and tailoring it to their specific situation, you keep your prospect more engaged and interested in learning more. And then don't forget to follow up on the question you asked. Why do you feel like that would benefit you? Why do you think that's something that you need? With this approach, they will begin to sell themselves. Yeah, man, I really need that. I feel like if I had that, that would do X, Y, and Z. And you are going to end up having them explain to you why they need what you offer so badly. Now it is time to approach the step in the sales process that people dread the most. But fear not, with the right steps, this can be a seamless process with no added sales pressure. Remember, Remember, all the questions that you've asked prior have led up to this point. You're not just pitching for the sake of it. You should have a deep understanding of their problems, circumstances, and most importantly, the pain that is tied to their problem. This sets you up to present the exact solution that they are looking for. Now, it's important to summarize and provide them with a concise brief on your solutions that will solve their problem. Bring out their emotions and feelings by reminding them of their pain points. Remember to break down the solution and make sure the prospect understands every single 
single point. Use questions to prompt and move prospects forward, but never pitch without their permission. When a prospect shows interest, clarify why and ask questions to solidify the sale. Don't jump straight into taking the sale, as you may encounter underlying objections. Utilize why questions to have the prospects justify their interest and their need for your product or service. When it comes to the pitch, this is where most average salespeople start to stress and start to freak out a little bit because they're about to ask someone to hand them thousands and thousands of dollars, which can be daunting, but if you've done everything right up until this point, there should be no added sales pressure. During the pitch, the main thing you wanna focus on is having strong rapport and trust and maintaining that. A good way to not compromise trust or rapport during the pitch is by using correct verbiage. And you can do this in simple ways by changing words like contract to agreement or price to investment. This is a simple way to maintain trust during the pitch. Then once you go through your entire pitch, you drop price and you be silent. And it would sound like this. The total investment would be 6,000 US dollars. Now, if you aren't used to it, this can be quite an awkward silent, but you need it because what is happening is the prospect is now taking in the amount that you just stated. Deliver the price with confidence and conviction and then be completely silent. Shut up. Just 6,000 US dollars. This maintains frame. The issue with inexperienced salespeople is they start to freak out and they start to stutter and they'll say something like, so the price is 6,000 USD. I know you might not have that right now, but like, I'm sure we can make it work if you want to like maybe do like this or that. And they just yap. But in reality, you've been setting up the entire call to specifically tailor them the exact solution they need. So in reality, your pitch should sound, like I said, the total investment is 6,000 US dollars. Module five objection handling now most salespeople believe the prospect only has one objection but that's not always the case in fact a prospect can have multiple objections and it's up to you to ask the right questions to discover all the underlying objections for example if a prospect has an issue with cash flow or financing john let's say we were able to support you with the financing side of your investment would there be any other issues you would need to resolve before moving forward asking open-ended questions like this gives the prospect an opportunity to talk about or bring up any other concerns that they may have, which could include issues with fulfillment, trust, and so on. By digging deeper and uncovering underlying objections, you'll be better equipped to address them and close the sale. Just remember, it is important to ask specific tailored questions instead of broad questions to avoid random general objections. If you ask something like, do you have any questions? They could say anything. But what I got taught was that it's always better to prevent objections rather than having to handle them. Objection prevention is the best method. When it comes to objections, you don't want to stress, be confrontational, start yapping, but you want to be understanding, slow, empathetic. There are logistical objections, like when a prospect says, I can't afford their product or service. When this happens, it's important to stay calm and unbiased. Don't get defensive like an average salesperson would. Instead, start by asking questions. For example, if a prospect says they would love your product, but they can't afford it, ask them if it would work for them if they did have the money. And if they say yes, follow up with a why-based question. Why do they feel like it would work for them? Another approach is to just ask them how they would be able to address their financial situation so that they could afford the product. Because if the prospect does believe that it will help them and it is the solution to their problem, then they are going to need to figure out how to resolve their issue anyway. And you can even encourage them to get creative and think about things like credit cards, financing, loans, or payment plans. By showing that you care, and that you're willing to work with the prospect, you increase your chances of closing the sale. Don't give up on your prospect just because they said that they cannot afford the product or service. Instead, try to work with them and find a solution that works for everyone. Another way of looking at this is an analogy that I don't even know who told me it, but someone said this analogy once and I'm paraphrasing, but say someone has a dream car, right? So say someone's dream car is a Porsche 911 GT3, which costs around $400,000, I think. And they only had $5,000. If you told them that they could have a brand new Porsche 911 GT3 twin turbo doubled exhaust for $8,000. Do you think they would find a way to find the money? They probably would because a Porsche 911 GT3 for $8,000 is a really good deal. Do you understand? This shows that it's not necessarily the price that is the important part, but it is the value of what you are offering. If the value is high enough, the prospect will most likely find a way to be able to afford it. My favorite way to handle objections is by what is called looping. Like I said before, 
before, when people normally get objections, they start to panic. And when you do that, you lose rapport. When you get an objection, it simply means that there's something the prospect isn't quite sure about. For example, let's say the prospect says, yeah, Marcel, you know, this is a really good deal, but I just want to think about it. I would say, I completely understand, brother. Let me ask you though, do you believe that with our product or service that you would actually be able to achieve your goal, achieve 10K a month or whatever their goal is? And they would say, yeah, man, I, I do think it would help me achieve my goal. Then I would say, okay, man, so it would help you achieve your goal. And do you feel like you are actually willing to put the work in you need to do to make this work? Yeah, man, I'm ready to put the work in. I can definitely see myself doing this. Okay, man. So if you believe in yourself, you believe that what we offer is going to help you get to your goal. So with that being said, are you ready to get started? If he says yes, then you start. If he says no, you continue looping. You ask the same set of questions and then you can ask, so where's the gap? And they will probably give you the actual objection. It's a lot of money, man. I'm just like kind of scared to spend that much money. Okay, so you're scared to spend that much money. Okay, so you, you've got enough, but you're just a bit fearful to invest that money. Well, let me ask you, man, have you accumulated that money so that you can continue going down the same path and just have it sit there? Or have you accumulated that money so you can actually change your life and get to where you want to be? This way, you're working with them, helping overcome their fear so that they can take the right steps and the right make the right decision for themselves. Module six finding a business to work with when finding a business there is a few criteria that you want to check off you do this by asking yourself questions and researching the business do they have a good reputation do people need their product or service do they actually generate results for their customers how often do they offer their product or service how long have they been in business for are they running organic or paid traffic or both are they scaling their business how long have they been in business for why do people need their product or service by considering these factors you can find business owners who are not only successful but they have solid marketing in place and they have a consistent lead flow with the right prospects and the right business you will be able to sell with conviction and achieve great results you want to avoid shitty businesses with shitty offers else you are not going to be able to sell with confidence and conviction because nobody's getting results and you probably feel like a piece of shit because you might be now you can also do this by looking at their social media and the quality of their testimonials and their results if someone's got a story highlight of results and they've got three different people that kind of look like they got paid to give the testimonial it's probably not the best fit if you've got a business with years and years and years of results and testimonials that look really good and are proven that's probably a good offer now i personally got my first role through the academy that i joined because of the connections that i had built through that academy like i said if you want the opportunity to book in a call with their team below i'll leave that link below now the absolute best way to ensure that you're getting on as good of an offer as possible and you're in the best possible position when you're doing outreach is by building a personal brand. There is huge importance in being of value and providing value. Your social media tells the business everything they need to know about you without even saying a word. So if you've got embarrassing or unprofessional photos or you with the boys drinking beers, get rid of them. <laughs> In today's climate, your social media is your resume. Instead of hounding business owners asking if they're hiring, focus on providing value of your own. My Instagram account is a really good example of this. By growing a social media presence on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and more, not only do I put myself in a position where I could probably get 99% of sales roles if I wanted to, but I also put myself in a position where businesses reach out to me asking if I will come on their team as a closer. And I say, no because I'm focused on my own shit. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a closer and you build a personal brand, people will reach out to you asking you to join that team, which is unheard of for the most part. And don't worry, because I'm gonna get into exactly how to build a personal brand very soon in this video. But how to find a client, how to find business owners. What I would do is personally just watch a bunch of different YouTube videos in the niches that I wanna be in, find the best mentors and business owners in that space. But for you guys, if you wanna find a lot of business owners quickly, what I would suggest is just picking your top five niches, list them out. If it's mindset, fitness, business, finance, whatever it is, then going to Instagram and putting that niche and then coach. So fitness coach, mindset coach, business coach, e-com coach, Airbnb coach, and so on. This is gonna give you a ton of different options. I would then start sending 50 to 100 cold outreach DMs a day. Once you've gone over your criteria, you've found a business owner, drop some messages to them that deliver value to their current sales team. For example, try starting with, hey John, not sure if your current sales team is doing this, but I've seen that by providing a short five minute pre-call video to watch at least 24 hours before the call, this will increase your show up rate and the quality of the call. This is a strategy I use with my sales process. 
And then also, if you want, through the conversation, you can ask if they have any room on their team. By highlighting a problem that their current sales team might be facing and providing useful information that will benefit their business, you're standing out from the crowd. You're not just saying, hey, are you looking for an appointment setter? but you're coming to them with results and useful information before even getting anything from them. Now, once you've found a business owner and you've landed an interview and they're ready to almost work with you, if you are a good fit, then you have to actually close the client. You actually have to become a salesperson before you're a salesperson and sell yourself on why you should be in their business. This is how you do it. Before you do anything else, what you wanna do is research their business and basically be an expert in their business before you even get on the interview. Research the business, the business owner, go and find content content and testimonials from their business. Show that you genuinely care and you genuinely want to help them grow. Do not come across as a hungry salesperson. Please give me a roll, please girl. You want to be there because you genuinely want to help their business, you believe in it and you want to help it grow. Now, on the call, there's a few different things you can do to highlight your skills. Ask the business owner to role play with you to showcase your skills. Practice prior, obviously, so you're prepared. I obviously could do this through the training group that I was in, like I previously mentioned. On top of that, if you're in a training group or an academy like I was in, you will have a bunch of role plays recorded that you can also provide to them so they can watch you flex your muscles a bit in those role plays. You don't only want to try to sell yourself to them, but you also want to ask questions about their business. Ask questions like, how long have you been in business? Where do you plan on taking this business in the future? What do you think you could work on in your business to make it better? Too often, salespeople want to rely on handouts or warm leads and basically just come into a business and be fed money without having to do any work. But this mindset needs to change if you want to truly be successful. As a salesperson, you are a trained professional, so act like it. Business owners are bombarded with opportunities every single single day. You need to stand out by being persistent and committed to following up. Don't be discouraged if you're initially ignored or left on red. Instead, let the business owner know that you will persistently follow up with them because that's the type of salesperson that you are. Show that you're willing to push and challenge yourself and persist with even old leads and following up. This is the mindset that will help you and your client's business grow. Keep track of all the businesses that you've messaged and follow up with them regularly. You never know when a opportunity will present itself. Be the salesperson who treats every lead as if it was the last one left and never ever stop following up because eventually it will pay off trust me module seven being a remote sales rep by now you should be in a sales role congratulations i'm proud of you for getting this far you should now be a high ticket closer most of you will have probably been working some kind of traditional job up until this point be it in retail be it in construction be it a nine to five now that you have spent a month or two preparing to transition out of that job you're going to have to adapt to a few new things because a remote sales role is different to a comfortable nine to five one there's going to be a lot of pressure two there might be some uncertainty and three you will need resilience and as much much more as well it is important to remember that sales is a commission-based role and with a lot of these remote jobs having no base rate meaning that you are now going from a comfortable paycheck which some people are addicted to to eating what you kill some may look at this as a negative but in reality this is a positive it forces you to adapt develop new skills act fast and hold you extremely accountable because you get paid what you are worth so if you want to be a lazy shitty sales rep you're probably going to start having to eat eat the bugs. Now, being a sales rep is not all sunshine and rainbows. My first six months, there was a ton of uncertainty. There'd be weeks where I made zero dollars. Obviously, you can imagine what's going through my mind when I'm making no money. And then there'd be weeks where I'd make five thousand dollars and then the next week i would make zero dollars again so very up and down very uncertain and your performance will vary a lot week by week and this is something that you will need to get used to i understand that everyone's situation is different understand that with this roadmap you are not planning on being a remote sales rep for more than five years your aim is to come in master the skill stack insane wealth then transition i personally only spent around one and a half years as a remote sales rep in this role your aim should be to put up as many numbers as possible i personally had max availability on my schedule 6 a.m to 9 p.m. sometimes later no distractions killed the role for as long as possible to build the skill and become as good of a salesperson as i could and then scaled from there now you might be thinking why spend so much time learning something and becoming really good at something just to leave it after a few years because understand that you didn't just learn sales to stack a bunch of cash but you learned sales to make a lot of money build communication skills learn how to influence learn how to persuade learn how to build your network and get in the room and also learn how to get people to hand you money in any business all businesses are just sales and marketing is just sales at scale understand that as a sales rep you're going to be mixing and working for people who are doing upwards of five hundred thousand dollars every single month i met 22 year old multi-millionaires from being a sales rep 
you'll be learning how to communicate, persuade, and influence. Make sure you are soaking up and embracing this role as much as possible. Be relentless, be ruthless. You will not survive in the sales game as a pussy. This role could probably take you two to three months before you make an even around $2,000 a week. Then around six months in, you should be making around 10K a month. And at this point is when you want to start building something even bigger for yourself, which leads me to the next module. Module eight, building a brand. Now, this is where things begin to get serious. You are now going to put yourself on the map. You've probably been a sales rep now for some time, stacked a bit of cash, learned some really, really valuable skills, and you would have built a lot more confidence. You'll be a better speaker, a better communicator. You'll know how to articulate yourself better. You'll have some stories. You'll have some knowledge. You'll have some information. You'll have value to provide, and you'll just be a more interesting individual and a more charismatic individual. You'll be making between five to $10,000 a month, which is quite good, but now it's time to get serious and start building generational wealth. Now, understand the reason for building a personal brand is because at its essence, where attention goes, money goes. The more attention you accumulate, the more money and wealth that you will accumulate. Modern power belongs to those who hold the most attention in their lifetime. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to build a personal brand. And I know a lot of you are going to start tweaking and have a lot of questions about this step. Oh, a personal brand, I got to build post content. So let me assure you that this is pretty much a must in 2024 if you truly desire financial freedom. And I'm going to explain this to you by showing you exactly what it did for me. I started posting content for the first time in September of this year. Mine seemed crazy. I have literally only been posting content and building a brand for four months, which is not long at all. In that time, I went from $2,000 a week to $9,000 a week. I went from 2,000 followers on Instagram to four and a half thousand. I went from zero TikTok followers to 24,000. And I grew my YouTube to one and a half thousand. So some of you are watching this in the future. So those numbers are even bigger, much bigger actually. <laughs> So through me, you can see the insane power and scale of a personal brand. I cannot stress enough that this is going to be the step that completely transforms your life for good. Now, building a personal brand requires you to put yourself out there, to be authentic, to be vulnerable, to be known, and to create attention around yourself as an individual. Now, what does this cause? Well, it causes fear. The hardest part about building a personal brand and making content is starting. It is overcoming that initial fear of posting because everything after that is easy work. Now, now, nearly every single person is going to have a ton of fear when it comes to posting content. And although it seems silly to me now, I also 100% had a lot of fear when it came to posting. When I started posting content, I wanted to start a new IG. I didn't want everyone I knew to see me posting new content. I didn't want people to see my TikTok. I wanted it to kind of be away from everyone I knew. But I'm going to tell you from experience, to get that shit out of your head ASAP. You are building a personal brand. It is personal to you. Another reason why getting a new IG or starting a new IG is one of the biggest crimes or a big no-no is because the first people that buy from you or genuinely fuck with you or become a fan are gonna be people that you already know. My first few sales were to four or five of my good friends. Now, people have fear when it comes to posting for a few different reasons, but the big one is just like the fear of being judged or hated. And I'm not gonna to lie to you and say that you won't be judged or you won't get hate because you're going to 100%. However, hate comes with the territory. It is better to be known and disliked by a few people than to just not be known at all. I honestly don't even know who said it, but some smart guy once said that if you're not getting hate, you're just not getting in front of enough people. People, which is true. So I'm going to tell you a little story. So I was working in a warehouse with a bunch of old guys, like 30, 40 year olds, some 50 year olds, and then some guys my age as well. And when I first started trying to make money online, they all kind of looked at me like I was doing some weird shit. I was an idiot, but I quite quickly became ultra successful with it. And then I had kind of completely escaped a construction job. And obviously then I started posting content. And just recently I actually got told uh, by one of the younger guys at this job that like 30, 40 year olds were sitting in the lunchroom, watching my content, talking shit about me, I guess, behind my back. Now, now think about it. I worked with these people and they hated their lives. They hated their job. They didn't get played from their wives. And I'm not talking shit. I'm just telling you the truth. And they were miserable. And I was the one who actually went and changed it and made hundreds and thousands of dollars at 23. And there is a bunch of grown men sitting around looking at me, trying to make fun of someone who's absolutely annihilating them in every single realm. Now, this is actually just quite sad. Like I don't feel any disdain for them. I feel bad. But the point I'm making is that whenever you receive hate, it is most likely going to be coming from people who are angry because they don't see themselves being able to do the same thing that you are doing. This leads them to seeing their own flaws and their own insecurities because they can't imagine doing what you're doing. Now, some successful people don't handle hate really well, but I find it extremely nonsensical to even be remotely affected by it because when you're successful and you know you are, you know for a fact that anyone hating isn't doing as well as you because I'm not hating on anyone who's below me. Why 
why would I? I truly just pity anyone who hates on me. And I genuinely just pray that they change their mindset and they open their mind and they try to take some value and learn something and they change their lives for good. I truly, truly want them to improve. A lot of times, the more hate you're getting, the more successful you're becoming. But when you realize that I'm gonna die, you're gonna die, we're all gonna die and nothing really matters, it's better to post content and become wildly successful while you're still here than to live in fear. And this fear isn't fear of yourself it's fear about other people's opinions so yes people will talk yes people will see you and say things but the pain you're going to feel regretting never starting content and building a personal brand and getting super successful is going to hurt far more than the pain of posting a few videos and having some people that you used to go to school with who hate their lives and work in an accounting job and they want to die every day talking shit about your content all right so now that you're no longer being a little pussy old let's get into how to actually build a brand step one analyzing yourself before you go ahead and do anything you need to understand who you are obviously let's assume you've done every step up until now you're going to have some knowledge about sales business and so on and you're going to have some insight and information to share on that but there is much more to you as a person than just your skills and your knowledge building a personal brand is personal it's about who you are so audit yourself audit your beliefs and when i say audit i mean take out each individual one of your beliefs traits values morals and things you stand by and analyze them under a microscope decide if you want them there decide if they serve you if they're what you truly believe in and then put them back. You really need to know who you are and what your values are and what you stand for in order to have a strong personal brand. Then once you've done this, write a description of who you are, what you stand by, write down a big description of how you want to be perceived, what you stand for, what your values and beliefs are and what your mission is as you begin to gain influence. Are you going to lead people to God? Are you going to be a degenerate? Are you going to influence people to do good? Are you a vegan? Are you animal based? What countries do you like? Are you political? Do you not care about politics? Do you go post do you have strong opinions on the gays do you like fighting do you like lifting figure this out stick to the things that make you you and that make you unique because that is what people are going to resonate with authenticity is the highest vibration that you can operate at the more authentically yourself you are the better relationship you're going to build with your audience once you've done all this insightful self analysis and it's time for the next step step two is to now build a relationship with your audience because now that you know exactly who you are and how you want to come across, it's time to start actually building that relationship. There is a ton of different ways to do this and I'm going to go through the best ways for you to do so. The first one is storytelling. Storytelling is by far one of the best ways to build a relationship with your audience and grow an audience because you're sharing real, true, authentic experiences that are unique to you that people can relate to and also take value from. Two is documenting. Documenting is similar to storytelling. However, it's present instead of past. It's where you're just documenting your life. It can be done by like creating vlogs or posting stories. This builds a relationship with your audience because they're watching your journey in real time. Three is education. So this is where you provide some sort of value, whether it be health, fitness, mindset, business. As long as whatever you're doing and providing to them is improving their life, they will like you and they will follow you. Now, there are more ways that you can build the relationship, but I would personally focus on these three first and foremost. Now, let's get into the platforms that you can use in order to build that relationship. The first one is Instagram. Instagram is king when it comes to personal branding for a few reasons, but mainly because it's the main social media people use to build personal relationships. Instagram is where you basically broadcast yourself to the world and it's perfect because it allows you to build a profile build a feed and also post stories now stories are the secret source and they're golden tool when it comes to personal branding because when you dial in your stories it basically becomes a daily tv show i try to post around five stories every single day if i can and this is by far one of the best ways to build a relationship with your audience because they feel like they're constantly on a facetime call with you which builds trust it makes them like you and it makes them get to know you. This is how you really get close with your audience and really start to build a strong following. Start documenting your entire day. I'm going to share with you guys my posting schedule. So daily is one reel, five stories and one broadcast channel post and weekly is three posts to feed. This posting schedule makes it so that people never stop seeing you. You're constantly in front of them. They're constantly getting to know you. You're constantly in front of them, improving your life, improving their life and building that relationship. Daily posting on Instagram is a non-negotiable. Number two is YouTube. YouTube is another key platform for a few specific reasons. It's not a daily vibe like look at my life, like Instagram is, but this is like the other main platform where you're going to build trust with your audience because YouTube is the only place where people will be watching hours and hours and hours of you. If there's five people and they're all building a personal brand, 
and only one of them has posted a lot of YouTube content, who do you think people are going to feel most comfortable? Who do you think people are going to trust the most? It's the person who they're watching for hours and hours and they've watched a lot of their content. So YouTube is super powerful when it comes to building trust and building credibility. Someone who's got no YouTube videos is going to be a little bit less credible than someone who's been posting for a year. So definitely start posting on YouTube because this is where you're going to build that trust. And especially when you do start to promote your offer or someone else's offer, this is where you're going to get conversions. Three is TikTok. So TikTok is a really good traffic source for virality and you can get really big numbers really quickly. But TikTok is full of short attention spans, which makes it harder to build a strong or reputable personal brand. There's people who have millions of followers on TikTok and they still only get a few thousand views because they're not building as loyal of a following. The type of content that performs best on TikTok is just raw, picking up your phone and filming yourself instead of the highly produced stuff. I do believe TikTok's on somewhat of a decline because they keep really changing the algorithm massively, try different things to monetize it because no one wants to run ads on their platform, but it's kind of hurting the quality of the platform. So I don't see as much longevity in something like TikTok as I do in YouTube, which has already stood the test of time and has basically been the go-to platform for content for about 10, 20, 30 years now. So build on TikTok, try to get some virality, but make sure you're trying to traffic that audience to your YouTube and to your Instagram where you're gonna have a stronger base. So number four is X. So me personally, I'm lacking heavily on X, so go follow me, please. On a real though, this is somewhat of a honorable mention for the fact that I'm not really big on it. I haven't posted a whole lot on it, but I do think X is gonna become one of the main social media platforms because now Elon's running the show. I mean, they have long form content and it's basically the last beacon of free speech on a major level. So I do think X will eventually start to compete with things like YouTube. So I do think it's important to also be building on on X. Module nine, creating content. Now I wanna dive into how to actually make content that bangs. The first one is SEO, which is just search engine optimization. It's important to realize that platforms like YouTube and TikTok are just search engines. So meaning the better you are at optimizing for keywords and search terms, the better your videos will perform. I personally use vidIQ for this when it comes to YouTube, and that gives me different keywords and gives them a score out of 100 on how low their competition is and how high their search volume is. This allows you to find exactly what your audience is looking for. For example, if I go into vidIQ and I search up affiliate marketing, it'll tell me the highest search terms in affiliate marketing. Same for anything else. Another way to do this on your own is to go to YouTube channels that you like or you want to model off and see which one of their videos where the view count of the video exceeds their subscriber count. That's normally an overperforming video. Content style two is trainings and tutorials. This is where you take your niche and then you just provide a ton of value and education within your niche. You just find a problem that people are having within your niche and then you solve that and you put it in a video. If I was trying to make videos on how to grow on YouTube, I would search why can't I grow on YouTube, how to grow on YouTube and see the videos there and then create a training or tutorial with the problem that people are having. This is simply to build a relationship with your audience and also gain followers because you're helping and providing value to their life. It's important to remember that the people that follow you aren't really your friends, but it's a value exchange. They're following you because you provide some kind of value to them. The third type of content is recreations. And this is a super powerful content type because you're basically taking a already proven method, rewording it, changing it to be your own with your own unique style. What makes this powerful is you're not reinventing the wheel or taking a shot in the dark. You already know something works. You just have to do it in your own unique way. And I don't mean go find a video and copy a word for word bar for bar. But what I mean is if you see a good video with a good hook, just take the hook, make it your own video. Once again, just go to YouTube or TikTok, find the videos with the highest views, the highest like count and then make it your own again the best way to do this is to actually take three or four different videos and then combine them all in your own unique way content style four is documentation now there's content creation and there's making content and then there's just documenting it is far easier and far more laid back but just as powerful as any other content style. The best modern example of this is probably Sam Sulik. Bro just documents his everyday life and sets up a camera, very low production quality, and just takes people with him on his life. Yet he is massively, massively successful. Yes, part of it is because he's like insanely jacked, but you understand my point. Focus on these four content styles first and foremost. A really important lesson I learned about content creation is to create a vision and get clear on what it is that you actually want to achieve and what your goal is with creating content and what you want your empire to look like and 
constantly anchor yourself back to that on a daily basis. Try to detach yourself from the outcome and the numbers because you will burn out very quickly if that's what you're operating off. And just try to make stuff that you actually enjoy. If you're operating off the vision, it'll be far harder to burn out. People crave authenticity nowadays. So remember to always be yourself and try to be as authentic as possible with how you convey your message. Try not to overthink this step too much. For TikTok, pick up your phone and start yapping. For YouTube, script out valuable videos or document your life. On IG, build a relationship with your audience through posts and through stories. Equipment I use, Lumix S5 II, Shaw SM7B, Amaran 60D with Softbox, Shaw SM7B, Rode mic stand. That's basically it. You don't need any of this. You can literally just use your phone, but people ask me, so I'm telling you. Remember, consistency compounds. So don't do this for five weeks and then quit. People like Hormozy and E-Man, they were working and posting content for years and years and years before they saw any success success and then they had blown up. Another thing I saw Homozi talking about is when he went from posting seven pieces of content a week to posting 70 pieces of content a week, that's when he started to explode. So stay consistent and stay high volume. Remember, consistency is where you are going to differentiate yourself from the majority. Most people cannot do one thing for an extended period of time repeatedly without seeing any growth. So if you can just lock in and stay consistent and keep working, you will allow yourself to be the outlier. If you start posting content and it goes really well, you have to continue to do it with the same drive, hunger, and input that you have been doing it up until that point. If you start posting content and it doesn't go well, then you have to keep doing it with the same hunger, drive, and input that you were before to actually do it enough times to get to a point where you can make good content. Do you understand? Persistence, resilience, and consistency. Simply, just by doing this, you will become the person who can do things for an extended period of time. And you will have traits of the person who can do that, which will make you successful. Money will never be an issue for you. Module 10, monetizing. So now you have the skills to become massively successful. Sales, marketing, content creation. You have the ability and the skill sets to sell and you have an audience and a following to sell to. Where some of you might begin to struggle is when it comes time to actually build something that's worth selling to your audience, you don't actually know how to build that. I'm not gonna lie and say I have it all figured out. I have not built my own offer, but I absolutely plan on doing so in the future. Cause right now I feel as though I have more to learn, but let me explain to you different ways that you can monetize your audience without having to build your own offer and then also with building your own offer. So the first way you can get paid without having to build your own offer is by affiliate marketing. By far one of the best ways to generate an income is by becoming an affiliate for something that you truly believe in. I have a full training on how to be an affiliate marketer and I'll leave that below. All this is, is finding something that truly improves people's lives and then using your following and audience to refer people to that thing. Now, this needs to be something useful because you're going to lose your audience very quickly if you are referring them to dog shit. So find something that you've done, you believe in, and then you can refer your audience to it. Number two is monetization. YouTube will pay you once you have over a thousand followers and over 4,000 hours of watch time. I personally know people that make over $20,000 a month just by monetizing their YouTube channel. So monetizing your content once the views are up is another really good way to generate income. Number three is sponsorships and brand deals. So you can also take a step up from affiliate marketing where you actually become a partner and you become a sponsored person of a business where you get paid to promote their product or service. Now, once again, make sure you are being careful with who and what you are promoting because this is to your audience. And if you start promoting shit or if you start promoting things that go against your values and morals, it is not actually worth it. Your audience will remember your reputation so make sure you're maintaining your integrity and you're not promoting some chicks only fans or gambling or anything like that but i'm not going to hold you number four exclusive content and no i'm not talking about only fans but once you have a good following you can create a patreon or something where people actually pay to get exclusive content this is normally a monthly fee like netflix but it's for you specifically this isn't super popular but i know a lot of people who print with this like the minorities they have over a million subs on youtube alone and their patreon has different levels but the main one is around $16 a month let's say only 5% of their audience signs up 5% of 1 million is 50,000. If you have 50,000 people paying $16 a month you are taking home $800,000 every single month now granted a million is a lot of subscribers, but you can see how lucrative this is. 800,000 a month just on Patreon, bro. And then five is obviously creating your own offer. Now you can create your own offer 
when it comes to creating your own offer you can just do video modules you can just do information you can create a paid community like a discord or a school or a telegram these are all relatively easy to create communities and information products are extremely lucrative because you can sell them endless times and i would absolutely encourage you to go ahead and build your own offer just make sure it is very valuable and it is results based the reason the academy i went through performs so well is because it is a results based academy and the first concern of the people who manage that academy is getting results for the people that come in and i am living proof of that results above all else always when it comes to your offer module 11 success now by the time you've completed all the modules up until this point you're going to start to see some real tangible success and you're going to have some freedom that you haven't actually had before this is what i'm going to cover in the final and one of the most important modules firstly you are only going to see any tangible success at all whatsoever if you actually act on any of this stuff that i just told you because 99 percent of you didn't even make it this far through the video and 90 percent of you that are still watching aren't actually even going to act on any of this information. So understand truly that watching this video was a complete waste of your time. If you do not go, watch it back and act on each single step with hunger, with consistency, with focus and obsession. Now, you are going to need to absolutely work your ass off if you want this to work. And most people are not willing to do what's required. And I know that for a fact. So before you do anything else, Truly ask yourself, am I willing to do what is required? Is my why big enough for me to actually go on this journey and be consistent and put myself through some pain and actually delay gratification and get tunnel vision on my goals? If the answer is yes, to those questions and let's fucking get it i know i'm speaking to a small majority of people right now but i'm speaking to the younger version of myself who knew he was meant for more who knew he had big things to do and value to offer to the world but he didn't have a path and he didn't know how to do it but had that innate hunger to escape mediocrity if that is you your journey begins here now assuming that you worked hard and you've gained some traction and you're seeing some results be aware that you are going to become complacent i know when i first started to make money online and i controlled my own schedule and i could do whatever i want and it was kind of up to me what i did at what time i started to become complacent and also start to fuck around and fill the gaps of time with things that i shouldn't have been doing getting freedom and success opens a massive window for comfortability and complacency complacency is going to come into your life as you become successful you need to be aware of it and you need to not stay in it and this ties back to the two points that i've already made in this video vision and obsession obsession and vision are the remedies for complacency when i feel complacent or comfortable or that i'm lacking a little bit i remember my vision and because i am obsessed with achieving my vision i never stay complacent for any period of time when you have a mission and you need to accomplish it you feel different every minute i am not working i know someone else who doesn't have the things or the comfortability that i have is working harder i know someone who's just getting started who's making way less money is taking more calls doing more content is going harder than i am because they don't have the freedom that i do so i cannot remain complacent for long this is why it is so important to have a strong vision and obsession this is exactly what is going to keep you going once you are successful another thing you need to make sure that you're doing as you're growing and as you're becoming successful you're basically going to outgrow everyone you are going to create a gap between you and your friends your friends or whoever you're around they need to close the gap you cannot close the gap so be ready if you do bridge a gap and these people are not willing to close their gap themselves to outgrow and disconnect from them you are probably going to have zero friends at some point on this journey. On top of that, be willing to shed away your identity multiple times in order to get to where you need to be. There's a lot more that comes with success that I talk about on my IG, so go follow me on Instagram for me talking about these sort of things on a daily basis. If you want to be coached and guided by me and the people who taught me everything I know, once again, there will be a link below. But going away from this, start acting, start going through each module and start actually implementing and iterating on what I have taught you today. Make sure every day, you can get up and say to yourself every day bit by bit i'm getting better i'm dedicating my entire life to serving you guys and helping you guys change your lives i want to be a leader and a role model and i want to help you guys become the best version of yourselves i truly want to see you guys do everything i have done and much much more much much quicker and younger remember to not forget god on your journey do not chase worldly things materialistic and worldly things are never going to fulfill you follow the mission follow your god-given purpose and you will be fulfilled. Work every day in order to serve God and become the best version of his creation. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just equipped you with the entire blueprint for free. No more excuses, no more questions. Love you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Your journey begins now.